In this week's video, we welcome a special visitor and cope with more rainy days. We find an excellent park-up in the little Dorset village of Abbotsbury and then travel into Cornwall where we're enthralled with a medieval history intertwined in a landscape full of interest. But first, welcome to our channel. We are a retired couple, Kath and Sue, and have been travelling in the UK and living in our motorhome for the last two years with our fairy companions, Archie and Fudge. This freedom has taken us to some epic spots with magnificent scenery and there is, of course, more to come. Well, good morning, everyone. Now, I'm pretty sure at the end of the last video we said we'd pick you up at the next location. Well, we're not there yet. We're still at Dibbles. And uh, we've kind of got nothing really exciting to talk about today. Sue's popped out shopping. We've got a load of washing on. But I just thought I'd come and chat to you guys because it's absolutely chucking it down outside again. And it kind of got me thinking about the, generally the weather and I know as a nation we talk about the weather all the time but I never ever really used to notice the weather unless we were on holiday somewhere and now we really notice the weather because we live in a van it by nature is a bit more of an outdoor lifestyle and when it's raining like this you do feel a little bit confined to barracks but anyway Let's go to more interesting things. We actually have a visitor. This is Darcy. And if you've watched the channel for, well, for a long time since the start, you may well have met Darcy before because she has come to stay with us on our holidays in the past. I know, you, I'm talking about you, aren't I? Hey, oh, you're coming through. So Darcy belongs to some friends of ours. And we have, for a number of years, whenever they've gone on summer holidays, Darcy's come to stay with us on her holidays. But we're not far from where they live at the moment. So Darcy's having a kind of a little break, a little mini break with us at the moment. And our dogs and Darcy get on really well. So, but, so it's great. Three dogs in a van on a wet day, not so great. So we've actually moved on and it looks like, momentarily at least, we've lost the rain, which is just fantastic because it has been so wet. But we're now in a very little Dorset village called Abbotsbury and there is a really fairly sizeable car park that we're in at the moment. And it turns out you can stay here for the night for just eight pounds, which is pretty good. Now there's no facilities, but there is just there a pub um, if we're still here on Sunday over there there's a church and over there there's Sue and the dogs so this little lane is just opposite our parking spot and this is a just a lovely little village but Fudge and I are off to, for a walk well, what a lovely, quiet place. I'm currently walking down the centre of the road, so as you can see, it's a very, very quiet lane. I think pretty soon we're going to head off up in that direction up there, where it looks like there's some woods, and Fudge will enjoy that. Well, we really are just a few hundred metres out of the village, and we're on this bridle path. You might not be able to see this because it is a bit of a distance, but over there, I can see Chesil Beach. Well, can you believe it? We're still going up. This is Dorset. It's not the Lake District or the Cairngorms or the Dales. It's Dorset. Come on, Dorset, behave. way fudge that way or that way that is the question 
Well, according to the map, OS map, this area below me is disused pits. So, do you want to know what these mines were? They were shale mines. And shale is like rock that's made from mud that's been like squashed down over time and it splits um, into kind of sheets very easily. So it's used for um, pottery and tiles and that kind of thing. <laughs> Every day's a school day. Hello ladies. Hello. Hello. You're working along with us. Now, Fudge and I have decided to uh, go back the way we came because it turns out the footpath that we need to take is directly through this field of cows and the cows are right by the footpath. Now, I never used to be bothered about cows but I have heard some stories recently and we did have an experience with our old dog. We had a little, a little dog and a cow took an enormous dislike to him and was trying to headbutt him. Um, and I ended up having, he was only a little poodle, I ended up having to pick him up and kind of scare the cow off. And thankfully the cow went, but ever since then, I've always been quite wary. So we're not going to risk it. We'll just go back the way we came. I mean, it is their field after all. Well, we're almost back at camp. Um, we've come back down into the village in a slightly different place, but it's absolutely gorgeous, this little place. Right, the other thing I've noticed is there is a shop, a post office, and another pub. <laughs> that is everything you need in a village, isn't it? And there's actually lots of little, look like little craft shops as well. So you never know, we might get a bit of a chance tomorrow to explore in a bit more detail. Well, we're off for a little mooch about and we're currently on the grounds of the old Abbotsbury Abbey which is a 12th century monastery uh, that then kind of was taken down or certainly disused from the 15th century, 16th century during the dissolution of the monasteries by Henry VIII. Beyond that I know no more but we're going to go and have a look at it because uh, I do like a bit of old history like this. I think as I'm getting older and becoming part of history myself, it's becoming more interesting. All oh, right, make and mend. done our little jaunt around the village which doesn't take long because it's very small we're now off to the pub for some lunch well we've had a lovely lunch at the swan worth going to uh, but now Fudge and I are doing a little afternoon stroll ahead of some watching of rugby this afternoon. So I'm heading off up to St Catherine's Chapel, which is a, a structure kind of that dominates a hill. I'm going to find out more about it, hopefully when I get there. But it's one of those points that you look at and you think, I've got to get there. Turns out you can actually go in here, but no dogs allowed. So fudge has been left. Oh, 
Oh, there she is. She's waiting patiently. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. Hey, you're a good girl, aren't you? So that is St Catherine's Chapel, which sits up upon this hill with fantastic views, 360 degrees. So this chapel was built in memory of St Catherine something or other. Um, and St Catherine of Alexandria, and apparently she was one of the most loved saints of the medieval period. And so this was built in the late 14th century, in memory of her, and obviously provided fantastic views. And it was also a beacon from the sea. So after the dissolution of the monasteries, it's thought that that's why uh, this remains, because obviously um, sailors, mariners could use it as a point of navigation. Well, unfortunately, the rain is back again, but we've moved on and we are now in Cornwall. So we must get a cream tea at some point. And apparently in Cornwall, it's jam first and then cream. Well, we've arrived at the farm. It was a bit of a hairy drive up here and then a really tight turn, so tight, in fact, we couldn't make it. We had to go past and turn around. Should have videoed it, really. Anyway, we are the only people here. So we've got loads of space. It is uh, lambing season here at the moment, so Pudge and I are going for a walk, but she's going to stay on her lead. Not that I can see any sheep, but they did specifically ask us. Uh, the sheep are out on the moors and they're lambing. So we're going to go for a short afternoon stroll and if we find anything interesting, we'll show you. This, is, this wasn't the road that we came up to get here, but it was just like this. And at the side of the roads, almost like a little waterfall. Apparently tomorrow's going to be drier. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed. back at camp, wet and muddy, ready for a cup of tea. Eat. <laughs> She's done. So I would say this CL site is pretty good value for money because we're paying £22 a night, that's up to 15 kilowatts of electricity is included in that and you obviously pay for more. Look at this. It's even got its own little shower room. And there's a little campus kitchen with, and you can hear, you'll be able to hear it in the background, a washing machine, pound a wash. So if you're ever in Cornwall and you're going away from the beach, come inland and come to Cheese Ring Farm, because this is really good value. Well, today is a much brighter day, but still really windy. Anyway, Fudge and I are going off to try and find some stone circles that we've been reading about. I have a real legend to go with them. So, let's hope we find them and we can share our experience. <laughs> can't see much there in terms of a mine shaft but there's obviously one there and uh, Sue was chatting to the owner of the site this morning and he was saying there's actually lots of mines or disused mines in the area and where I'm walking at the moment is actually where there was a once upon a time a railway let me see if I can show you the path it's very pronounced not sure how the trains would have got past those trees though <laughs> The old ruins down there. It's definitely some mine works. Do you know, for a minute I thought these sheep were following us. Well, they were. And the only reason I knew is because Fudge stopped to look back. I'm coming up to a sign that says Minions Heritage Centre. Surely can't be that building there because it's not got a roof. <laughs> Can you see this? 
that's a shaft down into the mine below. Thankfully all covered over with, uh, with like a metal grid. But you stand up there, you can't actually see the bottom. It's obviously really deep. Well, I've reached the hurling stones. It's really windy here, so I hope it's not disturbing the camera too much. There are two really pronounced rings of stones, but I'm sure I read there were three. There may be another one over there which is not as pronounced. I'll have a look in a minute, but there's certainly this one. I mean, I'm standing in the centre of one now. If I spin round, you'll get a sense of it, hopefully. Well, there's a legend that goes with this. So apparently, now I don't know whether this was three men or each individual stone represents a man, that would make more sense, but apparently there were men turned to stone in the Bronze Age because they were playing hurling on the Sabbath. I mean, that's proper punishment, isn't it? But I've asked that question about what was hurling then in the Bronze Age. And, well, there isn't really an answer to that because it's all part of the mythical legend. So nobody really knows. I heard on the radio today that quite a lot of people have been um, are really struggling at the moment and want to leave Britain because there's nothing here in Britain. Well, they just need to follow our channel because there is so much here in Britain. Now look at this. This is like, it's like a pond with trees in it and a wall around it. I mean, this is, this is man-made, this wall, let me show you. This wall is man-made, but what is it? I mean, look, this is a wall. It's a circular wall. And in the middle of it, there's water. That probably wasn't always water. But does this signify some kind of settlement, some kind of Bronze Age settlement? There's nothing on the map that specifically indicates this, which probably makes it all the more intriguing. Isn't it just wonderful? Isn't it wonderful what you can find when you just get time to explore? I, I'd love, if I was a kid, I'd be lost on these hills. I really would. We've come across this little reservoir, haven't we, Fudge? Hey? It, and it is a little reservoir, because what I'm sitting on now is a, another man-made wall, which holds this water in. And it's so sparkly on a day like today, isn't it? It's sparkly. I know, I know. Mm. Well, just for a moment, whilst we're in this little dip, a little respite from the wind. Believe it or not, there's a bloke through there climbing up that cliff. So we're gonna try and get a bit closer. Well, I'm almost back at camp now. I really, really enjoyed that walk. It was steeped in history, back to the medieval ages, some landscape that was just like different and, you know, just different from landscape I've walked on before. And lots of little kind of interesting nooks and crannies along the way. I would definitely recommend a stay at this site and taking in some of this uh, local landscape. Absolutely beautiful. Well, that's it, folks. We're back at camp. Cup of tea, feet up, I think. Uh, and I think we'll leave this video here for now. Hope you've enjoyed it. We're moving on tomorrow and we're going to a very, very special place. But more of that next week. Don't forget, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already and 
oh, don't forget that bell thing. And we'll see you next time.